Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selam ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem ecma'in. Allahümme enfa'ni bimme allemteni ve allemni bimme yinfa'ni ve zidni ilmen innekel alimul hakim. Allahümme akhrijna min zulumatil vahim ve akribna bi nuril fahim ve ifte aleyna bi ma'ifetil ilm ve sehhel ahlakana bil hilm. اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل آمين يا رب العالمين. My topic today is a short talk about flair brain sequence. This technique was developed in early 1990 by Hammer Smith Research Team and the original sequence sequence use TI value between 2000 and 2500 to null signal from the CSF and it is coupled with very long TR about 8000 and TE about 140 millisecond to create strong T2 weighting image. <laughs> Flare MRI is a heavily T2 weighted image, damps the ventricular CSF signal, and this causes highest signal on the sequence of from certain brain parenchymal abnormalities, such as MS, while the CSF appears black. Here, as we see in T1 and T2 and the flare images, the CSF spaces appears black and in T2 white. The flare pathology appears hyper intense due to optimizing of TI required to null the signal of water. And uh, CSF will be low signal intensity on the flare, which has two advantages. First, the periventricular regions are better differentiated from the CSF, as we will see in some next examples. And uh, second, the infectious exudate may replace the CSF in the cell side to be a hyper intense on the flare images, but may be difficult to detect in conventional proton signal spin echo sequences. Flare uses in more demarcating of the edema, demyelinating disease, infarction, in the, especially in the periventricular location, and detection of hemorrhage especially the subarachnoid hemorrhage when the CT scan is negative. Here are some signal intensities on flare and T2. As we see the cyst, it is a bit dark on flare and bright in T2, solid mass bright in both, subarachnoid hemorrhage bright in both, and fat it is dark in T2, and the bright in flare. As we see here, this is the periventricular region will be will demarcated comparing to the T2 weighted images, especially in the periventricular region here and there. Here also the patient with MS how it is how you see the will define lesions and distinguish the CSF spaces from the lesion in the MS. And this, it is difficult to differentiate it from the T2. Here, a patient with uh, adrenalocleocodystrophy, and we see the MRI and the flare images have defined the 
white matter lesions and the bioxivitol lesions uh, uh, regions comparing to the T2 weighted images. Here, patient with uh, glioblastoma, and we see how much the edema will define the lesions, and it is obliterated the CSF uh, uh, in the occipital horn. And the, by the way, the white matter on the T1 appear high, and in the flare images appear intermediate, and in the T2 appear low, and the gray matter appear high in the in the T2. In the uh, sorry, in the flare images and intermediate in T1 and T2, and the CSF spaces appear black and flare as we see here, and high, high in T2, in T2, and low in T1. The gray matter, it is uh, as we said, it is high in the flare images and intermediate in T1 and T2. Here, patient with the subarachnoid hemorrhage, and we see the uh, CSF spaces, it is hyper intense on the flare images. It is difficult to tell that in the T2, these are subarachnoid hemorrhage. Here, another two patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage with hyper intense CSF spaces as we see here, and we see here in this patient. Here another patient, the CT is negative, and the flare images is seeing hyperintense area in the CSF space due to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Thank you very much for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta subhanaka wa astaghfiruka wa atubu alayka.